back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Emily Dickinson, who lived from 1830 to 1886. I've read a poem or two of hers here on this show, but this is one that I think is uh, probably a little bit lesser known, but is one of her most fascinating poems. And it is called A Narrow Fellow in the Grass. The comments that I'm going to uh, share with you about this poem are from William Harmon's anthology, the classic hundred poems, all-time favorites, which I have uh, referenced a time or two. But he has some really, um, really interesting comments about this poem. And I'm going to go ahead and just share his thoughts with you because I think they get at the heart of this poem in a better way than I could possibly express. So here it is. Here is A Narrow Fellow in the Grass by Emily Dickinson. A narrow fellow in the grass occasionally rides. You may have met him. Did you not? His notice sudden is. The grass divides as with a comb. A spotted shaft is seen, and then it closes at your feet and opens further on. He likes a boggy acre, a floor too cool for corn. Yet when a boy, and barefoot, I more than once at noon have passed, I thought a whiplash. On braiding in the sun, when stooping to secure it, it wrinkled and was gone. Several of nature's people I know, and they know me. I feel for them a transport of cordiality, but never met this fellow attended, or alone, without a tighter breathing and zero at the bone. This is a poem, if you Google it, you can kind of get the secrets handed to you. But I like what William Harmon says here, without giving away this sort of central metaphor too obviously. He says, Dickinson could make a poem out of the simplest materials lying around the kitchen or backyard. But with the touch of her genius, domestic details took on the power of myth. She used ordinary verse techniques, here the ballad measure very common in hymns and other popular tunes, and repeated ancient conventions, here the riddle that describes something but does not name it. Readers like to figure things out for themselves, and it spoils the fun if somebody tells you all the answers. As with many of Dickinson's best poems, we meet here a beguiling mix of the routine, especially in the steady iambic rhythms, and the outlandish, especially in the rhymes that do not quite rhyme, because of a deficiency in the vowel or consonant components, or both. The rhymes are consistently inconsistent, so to speak, until the very last one, which is a perfect bass tone joining the syllables lone and bone. There is also a weird symmetry in the pattern of consonant sounds, not necessarily the letters in the line his notice sudden is. The outer syllables his and is rhyme, and they frame a sentence that has the pattern H-Z-N-D-S-S-D-N-Z, assuming a casual American sounding of notice. A reader may not consciously hear or see these patterns, but they do their work at an unconscious level. The effect is hypnotic and entrancing. End quote. So given what Harmon is saying there, while I read it the second time, try to figure out, if you don't already know, what this is a poem about. What is the riddle? What is the thing that is buried behind the riddle that, uh, that Emily Dickinson is offering us? So once more, here is A Narrow Fellow in the Grass. A narrow fellow in the grass occasionally rides. You may have met him. Did you not? His notice sudden is. The grass divides as with a comb. A spotted shaft is seen, and then it closes at your feet and opens further on. He likes a boggy acre, a floor too cool for corn. Yet when a boy, and barefoot, I more than once at noon have passed, I thought, a whiplash unbraiding in the sun when stooping to secure it. It wrinkled and was gone. Several of nature's people I know, and they know me. I feel for them a transport of cordiality. But never met this fellow attended, or alone, without a tighter breathing, and zero at the bone. This has been The Native Home. Thanks for listening. We'll be back tomorrow with another one.